Hey, and welcome back to the channel. Let's get your shift together. I'm Coach Adriana, and I empower survivors of narcissistic abuse to heal, set boundaries, and live life on their own terms. Today's video, I'm gonna be talking about when you feel sorry for your narcissistic parent and you increase contact with them and the cycle of abuse repeats itself. So one of the things that narcissistic parents can make you aware of this very early on like you'll be like three years old and like one of the first stories that you would have ever remembered if your memory even goes back that far mine doesn't but your narcissistic parent probably told you how much they suffered in their childhood and how terrible their parents were and how you are so lucky to have them as parents instead of you know your grandparents as your parents because they went through so much in their childhood and da 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 da, da. and so you start feeling sorry for them at such a young age. And it just becomes this conditioned thing where you just feel sorry for your narcissistic mother or father or whatever parental figure. And then, you know, you live your life a couple decades into it. And as you get older, that's kind of when the problems start to happen with your narcissistic parent, right? Like when you're a child, you don't really have a personality or opinions or know anything about the world really. And so you're much easier to manipulate and control for your narcissistic parent and that's why you know a lot of my clients they wonder like why why do i think i had a good childhood because you know my narcissistic mother wasn't that bad when i was like six years old of course she wasn't that bad when you were six years old you didn't have a personality you weren't rebelling against her you didn't have ideas and thoughts on what you might want to do with your life that had nothing to do with what your mother decided she wanted for your life you might break free for a while but then your narcissistic parent starts aging the thing is when you're raised by a narcissistic parent you kind of develop a lot of empathy right a lot of people think that if you were raised by a narcissistic parent you end up being a narcissist but obviously those people who think that were not raised by a narcissist so what do they know we end up actually having so much empathy. Like the world obviously needs more people with empathy, but the, the problem is when we start directing our empathy in the wrong places. So you start directing your empathy towards your narcissistic parent, especially when they start aging. And they start, you know, going on about how they had such a rough life and a hard childhood and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they'll usually do this when you try to sort of set some boundaries or separate yourself or you know lower contact with them and then they go ahead and they make you feel guilty right they make you feel sorry for them they've been through all of this stuff who cares what you went through like it, you're completely irrelevant your experiences your situation your childhood irrelevant because it's all about your narcissistic parent and then you start feeling guilty and people who feel guilty are easier to control you start believing that oh my gosh have i committed this heinous crime for wanting to separate myself from my aging narcissistic mother what kind of monster am i for doing this and then you get closer to your narcissistic mother you start helping her out a bit and then the cycle of abuse continues again and again and again and so this is why it's so important to understand the cycle of abuse first and foremost love bomb devalue discard so love bombing is basically anything that appeals to your empathy so when they're giving you you know their sob story about what a hard life they had and all that they make you feel sorry for them and one of the worst things that you can do is increase contact with somebody just because you feel sorry for them because they know that that's what you're doing and they know that's how to get you and that cycle is going to keep going over and over and over again and then of course we've got the devaluation right so once the narcissist has gained your trust and in this case this specific situation where they're aging they're you know maybe not doing so well with their health and they're telling you how horrible they had it in life and you know woe is me tiny violin in the background all that kind of stuff that is a form of love bombing because it appeals to your empathy and they know that they're going to gain your trust right when they're like being vulnerable with you when they're sharing you know all these horrible things that are going on in their life and all the stuff that they've been through it's it's a vulnerability that they're sharing it's almost like oh like they're being open with me and you know sharing this information that must mean that things might be better <laughs> And they never are and then of course as soon as they're satisfied that they have gained your trust from that love bombing this is when the devaluation starts and for those of you who have aging narcissistic parents who are trying to like convince you to live with them and take care of them i mean how do i even phrase this this is, it, it's, it's like a trap because they're going to be on their best behavior the moment that, you know, you sell your house or break your lease or whatever and move in with them. You're going to have some serious fucking regrets. 
you're gonna have so many regrets that maybe your intuition was telling you you were gonna have but you chose not to listen to them or you genuinely believed that things were going to be so good this time and you know your your mother needed you and all that and i mean i'm all for people taking care of family members but like when it's an abusive situation i mean that's what that's what like personal support workers are for that's what nursing homes are for and that's what the government is for you know like it's it's in most places in the world and if you know you live in some part of the world where you have to take care of your parents i this probably does not apply to you but in most places in the world um adults are responsible for themselves and you know just because you have adult children it doesn't mean they are required to take care of you when you get older right like you know people who have kids for the purpose of having like a caretaker when they get older like kind of selfish kind of narcissistic right just throwing that out there like your children are not your future nurses and doctors like that's what nurses and doctors are for <laughs> you know that's why these facilities exist but a lot of the times like narcissistic parents will convince you to drop everything in your life move in with them take care of them so they can keep abusing you and now you know if you have sold your house or broken your lease now you're basically you have nowhere to live and you're gonna have to start over all over again that's gonna be a huge pain in the ass so it's gonna be you know there's gonna be that part of you that just wants to work things out and make this work because if it doesn't like fuck you know it's just gonna be such a shit show and spoiler alert it's not gonna work out it is absolutely not gonna work out it's going to be a shit show this cycle of abuse is going to continue over and over and over again and narcissistic parents do not change narcissists in general do not change there's there's I, I know the the trolls are coming for me in the comments, right? Like, oh, if you keep saying that, then they're not going to change. No, it's their fucking choice if they're going to change or not, right? Somebody who changes, they need to make that decision for themselves because they're in so much pain and anguish that they choose to go down the avenues of making that change for themselves. And change takes a very long time. True, genuine, lasting change does not take like two weeks. It takes, it takes years in a lot of cases. And the thing with narcissists is that they don't think anything is wrong with them. They don't change their behavior, they change targets. And they will cycle through that cycle of abuse, love bomb, devalue, discard, and they might tell you that they're gonna change, but that's again, love bombing. They're trying to gain your trust because they know that you know, telling you that they're gonna change is something that you really, really wanna hear. And as soon as you hear it, you might start trusting them and they can sense when you trust them and then we go back into the devaluation. It's That's all you're ever going to have to look forward to with a narcissist. And if you still don't believe me, my narcissistic mother passed away four years ago. She did not change. She literally took all of her anger and rage and bullshit to her deathbed, to her grave with her. And, you know, little sidetrack story time, but why not? You know, I feel like it is relevant to this video. When my mother was on her deathbed, it was between May and July of 2020. Like it was, it was a long process. I think I'm gonna have to make another video like just about how all of that went down. Um, you know, it's been four years. I'm totally okay to talk about it. I know, you know, if you were following me four years ago, I was saying I'm gonna talk about this one day. So maybe like one day has come. Um, <laughs> anyways, when she was in the hospice, like, you know, really like on death's door, like it took her like seven, eight weeks to die. Like it was, it was a whole thing. She did not eat or drink that entire time. Like, you know, she was eating ice cubes here and there. Sorry, she didn't eat that entire time, like those seven, eight weeks. Like, I, I don't know, like she wasn't on any IVs or anything. I don't know how this was scientifically possible. But anyways, she kind of like couldn't even really drink. Like she would have ice cubes and stuff like that. She couldn't talk. She looked past you. She was actively dying, like literally on her deathbed, actively dying, no energy to eat, no energy to drink, no energy to speak. But she had the energy to give me the glare, right? And you know the glare. You know exactly the glare I'm talking about. That glare that your narcissistic mother or father or, you know, even if it's a significant other, you've seen that glare from any given narcissist in your life where they just look at you with so much disgust and hatred and like their eyes are empty. It's like there's no soul. They have those dead like black eyes. It doesn't even matter if they have like, you know, very light colored or like blue eyes. They go black and it's so creepy. She did that on her deathbed and the nurse at the hospice was standing right beside me when this happened and she even said to me like she she was the first one to say something and she literally said like holy shit is that what you had to grow up with for your entire life and i was like 
yeah. And she's like, wow, I am so sorry you had to go through that your whole life. And I completely understand why you've been estranged from her. And that was like the first medical professional that was even validating at all during that whole thing. And I, I really think I need to make a video on this whole topic. I'm like, you know, my mother dying. So leave a comment if you want me to um, make that video. And uh, if I get several comments, I will make that video. If I don't, I will assume no one wants that video. So <laughs> why waste the time making it if no one wants to hear about it? So please do leave a comment if you want to hear about it. And yeah, Basically, to my point, they don't change. They will manipulate you in any way that they can appeal to your empathy to make you feel sorry for them and make you feel guilty. Because when you feel guilty, what's the first thing you want? You wanna stop feeling guilty. So you're more likely to act on that guilt by making a decision and taking an action that is going to benefit your narcissistic parents. So let's say you're being guilted into living with your narcissistic mother. Like this is like a worst case scenario kind of thing, right? Um, it could even be something little like visiting your narcissistic mother once a week or whatever, right? But let's say you're being guilt tripped actively by your narcissistic mother. She's saying, oh, I went through all this stuff. Like my life's so hard, da 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 da. And here's the thing, your life was hard too. You were raised by this bullshit. And are you going around actively trying to sabotage other people's lives and you know, completely deteriorate their mental and emotional health. I'm going to go with no. And like, why is that so easy for you to not do? <laughs> you know what I mean? So somebody having trauma is never an excuse for abuse. Okay. Like this is going to be an extreme comparison, but I mean, if a murderer murders somebody, is it okay that they did that just because they had a hard childhood? No, they're still going to go to jail if they hopefully don't have a corrupt legal system wherever they live. But you know what I mean? Like it doesn't, whatever somebody has been through in their life does not justify or excuse disgusting, abusive behavior that literally harms your life. Being raised by a narcissistic parent is like murder of the soul, in my opinion. Like they bring you down so much. And like even being in a relationship with one, but honestly, like, being raised by one from day one, like you didn't have a shot in hell and you had no choice. Like this is just the cards that you were given and thankfully you figured it out. Even if you haven't fully figured it out, you're watching this video, so you're figuring something out, so way to go. At least you figured something out that like this whole situation on how you've been living your life is just, it's not normal and you've been so conditioned and brainwashed to believe it was normal you actually have the power to change that. It's not an overnight thing, but you can totally get there. And if you are interested in the first baby steps on how to get there, I do have a free quiz at the link in the description. Check that out and the results are gonna give you actionable steps and information on how to start that healing journey. And you'll have like actual useful tools that you can start using as soon as you take the quiz and it's free. So I would definitely encourage you to check that out. But anyways, they, you know, back to what I was saying before, you wanna stop feeling guilty when you feel guilty and you're being guilt tripped. So you might take an action. And the thing is when we make decisions in an emotional state, we make bad decisions. So if you're making a decision in a state of guilt, you're gonna make a bad decision, right? So if your mother's trying to convince you to go live with her because she's getting old and she needs your help and things are gonna be different this time and you know, she'll, she'll do anything that you want, whatever. And you know, she had such a bad childhood and if you don't do this for her, you're horrible and ungrateful and whatever, right? We know all the, we all know the song and dance. You might make a decision by acting on that guilt to sell your house or break your lease, go live with her, and then everything that you've ever worked for in your life is gonna go to shit because you felt too guilty to do something different. And this is why it's so important to process the guilt. This is why I always talk about the emotional work because when you process the guilt, and if you are interested, I have a five-day guilt detox. You can find it at the link in the description. It's only $7, you get lifetime access. You can start it literally today and it's going to help you to not be controlled by guilt from your narcissistic mother or father or whoever the narcissist in your life is. And basically once you get to that point where you are processing guilt instead of acting on guilt, it's going to sort of be a mindset of like, here's, here's basically a preview of like what you can expect if you start processing your emotions and processing guilt instead of acting on it. It's gonna be like, I feel guilty. I'm noticing that I'm feeling guilty. I'm getting curious about the fact that I'm feeling guilty. My mother's telling me I need to move in with her, otherwise I'm a bad person. 
You're going to actually get curious about it instead of just making a hasty decision and do what she wants and ruin your life in the process, right? So you're going to process the guilt. You might journal about it. Journaling is so great. Take the quiz and you're going to get the journaling instructions for free. And don't worry, no one's going to find what you journaled about because the most important part of the journaling instructions is to destroy it after. So take the quiz. You'll see what I'm talking about. But yeah, you're going to process the guilt. Maybe you're going to journal about how you feel guilty about you know, what your mother's trying to make you do and how you actually don't want to do it, but you don't want to feel guilty anymore. So you let yourself feel the guilt and you let yourself feel it in your body because emotions are a physical process, not a mental one where we think about it. We have to actually feel it in the body. And that's something that I go way more in depth about in the five day guilt detox. Again, it's only $7. You get lifetime access and you can literally get started today. So check that out, the link in the description. And then, you know, once you kind of journal about the guilt, you're going to sit with it. You're going to notice what it feels like in your body. The intensity is going to go down. That's you literally releasing the guilt from your mind body system. And guess what happens when you release the guilt? You make space for clarity that, oh, my mother's trying to manipulate me. This is a trap. It would be a horrible idea for me to, you know, sell my property or, you know, break the lease at where I am living right now and go move in with her and overhaul my life because I deserve to live my life. She's an adult. She needs to figure it out. I'm an adult. I'm figuring it out. But you can't get to that point of clarity if you're repressing all the emotions and making decisions because you don't want to feel those emotions anymore. The way to not feel those emotions anymore is by feeling them away from the narcissist. Because if you feel them in front of the narcissist, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna use it against you and use it as supply. And, you know, they're gonna have so many things to say about it. And it's just, you've been warned. <laughs> narcissistic parents, they're going to make you feel guilty because it appeals to your empathy. They know you have empathy. Feeling guilty doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong. It literally just means that you're a human with empathy and emotions and you don't want the other person to feel hurt because of something that you want to do or something that you don't want to do. Doesn't mean that you're guilty of like, of committing a heinous, disgusting crime, but they're gonna make you believe that obviously. And when you feel guilty, you're easier to control. And so you might get closer with your narcissistic parent because you feel so guilty about all the crap that they've been through in their life. Never mind the crap you've been through because that's irrelevant. It's completely relevant, right? I'm being sarcastic there. And then you get closer and then the cycle continues, right? Things go to shit all over again. And that's literally all you ever have to look forward to with a narcissistic parent or any narcissist in general, that cycle of abuse, love, bomb, devalue, discard, going to continue over and over and over again whether you like it or not so the sooner you accept that that's it and the sooner you start prioritizing yourself and your healing journey instead of them and their narrative the sooner you're going to have you know some semblance of sanity and a chance to actually have peace and freedom in your life thanks again for being here once again if you are not subscribed to my channel please do it if you've gotten this far in the video <laughs> If you've actually watched the whole thing and you're still not subscribed, just do it. It's like just a click. It's so easy. And feel free again to like this video, leave a comment, and don't forget to check out the link in the description for all the resources that I was talking about throughout this video. And I will see you next time. Bye.